Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the carb addiction doc. Um, I actually have a PhD in liver metabolism and liver function. So I did my master's thesis and my PhD in Toronto, and we looked at liver function. We looked at uh, non-function of a transplanted liver, but we also gained a lot of insight into how quickly the liver turns sugar into fat and um, something called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So we've got two parts, two parts of metabolic liver disease when it comes to eating. The liver very rapidly converts sugar, whether the sugar came from carbohydrates or from, from extra protein, uh, through gluconeogenesis or through uh, uh, transformation of the influence of insulin into fat. And those, that's how your triglycerides get raised. And then the liver produces VLDL to transport those triglycerides from the liver out to the fat cells. So if traffic is liver to fat cells, that's not a good source of traffic. The liver, the liver should be a recipient of energy from the fat cells. That's for a different day. But as the liver makes that fat, both the accumulation of the fat and what we call the devil's triad, inflammation of the liver when it's turning sugar into fat can damage the liver. And the liver will, go, will accumulate fat, you'll get foam cells, you get damage to the fat cells, to, to the hepatocytes at least in the liver, and then you get death of those cells and you get fibrosis, which is this thick material that forms around the cells, and then that can eventually lead to cirrhosis. And the commonest cause of liver disease. So we've got um, fatty liver, which is non-inflammatory, and then progressively steatosis or fat inflammation, non-alcoholic, because there's an alcoholic form of this, very similar pathway, but non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and it's the inflammation that's the issue. And yes, seed oils and proteins from grain products and other plants are involved, but the dominant thing, and my PhD did this, is sugar. So, and it's a big problem, very measurable. Now we've got all these studies and we've all, all got all these grading systems, uh, the F or fibrosis uh, scoring system from one to four, one to five, um, where we can grade and score fatty liver. And everybody out there is perplexed and they don't know why. So the researchers go along and say, okay, the liver is forming all this fat. We don't know why it's forming this fat, but the fat pathway is broken. How can we interrupt that fat pathway. Very, very similarly to the way under the influence of elevated insulin levels, the liver will turn fat into cholesterol and your cholesterol levels go up and they say, oh, those cholesterol levels are bad. A statin is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. It blocks the production of cholesterol and somehow magically that's supposed to be, have, help people have less heart attacks. Absolute BS. Well, in exactly the same way, they looked at this pathway of the accumulation of fat of, of triglycerides in the liver. They don't understand. They do not understand because you have to eat sugar, don't you? They don't understand that it's sugar that's causing the fat, but they see this accumulation of fat and they say, okay, what is driving that? Well, one of the dominant hormones, one of the dominant hormones that drive fat accumulation, because it's one of your four st dominant storage hormones. The four storage hormones being insulin, testosterone, T3, thyroid hormone, and human growth hormone. One of the dominant hormones that drives fat accumulation or fat production is T3, thyroid hormone. And there are receptors for thyroid hormone in that pathway, and thyroid hormone accelerates the production of, uh, um, of sugar or of substrate to fat. Now, they believe it's fat. So that's what thyroid hormone does. So these beautiful pharmacists looking for a drug to make a profit on have now come up with this drug called resmeterol, R-E-S-M-E-T-I-R-O-M. -E I've known it for a while. I sit on a few what we call key opinion leaders uh, in the healthcare field where we advise investors, we advise a variety of people about which drugs are good, which drugs are not good. So I get early warning about these. It is currently sold as a product called Resdifra, R-E-Z-D-I-F-F-R-A, and was FDA approved last year. So a lot of hubbub. Should we invest in this? Should we buy stock in this company? What's going to happen with this? And what uh, Resmetrom is, is it is a thyroid hormone beta receptor agonist. So what it does, it accelerates or accentuates one of two molecules, one of two receptors for thyroid hormone. And it blocks, basically, the production of fat by the liver. 
And we do see when you block the production of fat by the liver, we see a slight decrease in fatty liver. And that superficially, because that was their metric, can we reduce accumulation of fat by the liver? They're not saying, why is the fat being accumulated? What's happening with this? What's the inflammatory response? They're just saying, we want to block the production of fat by the liver. Just like the folks that produce that and say, we want to see the cholesterol number go down, and then we're going to assume magically that it reduces your heart attack risk without having that evidence. So we know that thyroid hormone... T3 regulates, together with insulin, both cholesterol production from fat and lipid metabolism. And it increases, thyroid hormone increases fatty oxidation in the liver. It increases the burning of fat, increases, and that's, how, that's the way it reduces non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And they've got studies that show marginal improvement, and it's such a difficult drug uh, disease to understand, and so pervasive that the FDA gave them approval for this marginal, marginal benefit. How marginal is the benefit? I'll give you the numbers. This drug is 83% as good as T3. So if T3 is the gold standard, thyroid hormone, triiodothyronine, if the active component of thyroid hormone, T3, it's 83% as good. So T3 is 100% good. This is 83% is good. And the efficacy is 48%. How effectively does it block that fat oxy fatty oxid or, or, or increase fatty oxidation? 48% as effective as T3. So, so think that through. Think that through, okay? So <clears throat> we know that thyroid hormone regulates lipid metabolism and cholesterol metabolism. And the higher your thyroid hormones, the more cholesterol you produce and the more you process that, that fat. So what's the problem here, folks? 82% <clears throat> of the patients in my practice who come into this practice looking for metabolic health, 82% of them are currently taking a thyroid hormone replacement. Levothyroxine, Cytomel, Armour Thyroid, MP Thyroid, they're... 82% of them are treated for hypothyroidism, which is not a disease, it's an observation. Your thyroid hormone's low. Why is their thyroid hormone low? It's an autoimmune disease. Hashimoto is the most common one, but it's blocked by the immune system and insulin that is caused by high carbohydrates. The same thing making the fat in the liver. So instead of these folks, these pharma pharmacologic, well, there's no drug for this. That's the problem. But they're saying, okay, let's block the pathway. Just like statins block the pathway to cholesterol, but it doesn't fix heart disease. Because cholesterol is not the problem. The problem is the inflammation. Fat accumulation in the liver is not the problem. The problem is the inflammation. And if T3, triode and thyronine is 100%, why not at least replace thyroid hormone in these patients? Why do we need this receptor blocker that's going to cause havoc everywhere in the brain and elsewhere in the body where thyroid hormone is important and it's going to block the conversion of T4, which is a thyroid precursor, to T3? Why are we destroying the thyroid metabolic pathway in order to reduce fat accumulation in the liver? For profit, of course, but because we don't understand the problem. Folks, please, whatever you do, if you have fatty liver syndrome, if you have NASH, if you have inflammation, even if it's fairly advanced, don't take this drug. Come and see us. Let's bump up your thyroid hormone. Let's measure your thyroid hormones first and foremost, because most doctors do not look at all five or six thyroid hormones. They hardly ever do enzymes. Oh, you've got low thyroid because we tested your TSH and it's high. BS, it's a feedback system. Let's look at all these numbers. Let's look at free T3 back to TSH. Let's look at the system. And if the system's broken, let's treat it. Let's give you the medication that's appropriate, the thyroid hormone that's dirt cheap, as opposed to this ridiculously expensive thyroid receptor blocker. And then let's treat your metabolic disease. Let's lower your blood sugar, lower your insulin resistance, and get rid of the cause of your fatty liver. I'm a surgeon. I operate on people under and around the liver all the time. 
And in my preoperative patients, I can get rid of fatty liver disease. I can get li rid of liver by, fatty liver by biopsy, not the inflammation, but the fatty liver within seven days, within seven to 10 days of putting somebody on a low to no carbohydrate diet. Not difficult to do with the incentive surgery. You don't eat carbohydrates, you don't have fatty liver disease, but now they have this ridiculously expensive drug, rah, 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 fixes fatty liver disease. No, it doesn't, because it doesn't treat the cause. It lowers the amount of fat, just like statins lower the cholesterol, but they don't treat heart disease. This drug lowers the amount of fat by changing fatty oxidation, but it doesn't fix the inflammatory problem. It doesn't fix non-alcoholic steatohepatitis because the only way you can fix that is by changing the hand-mouth disease. Folks, don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver steatosis, NASH. Common, common diseases because commonly we eat way too much sugar and starch. Way too much bread, way too much proteins from plants and way too many seed oils. But without the carbohydrates, those other two are not involved. The thyroid receptor that these drugs are blocking are vital to normal liver function, vital to normal kidney function, vital to normal heart function, and vital to normal bone health. So they're sacrificing bone health, they're sacrificing heart health, they're sacrificing liver health to reduce the amount of fat the liver is producing. Just like with statins, <clears throat> by lowering cholesterol, because that's all the statins do, they don't protect you from heart disease. By lowering cholesterol with this powerful drug, they don't care about brain fog, they don't care about liver disease, they don't care about rhabdomyolysis and, and muscle wasting, they don't care about GI health. All the side effects of statins, they don't care about diabetes because we're blocking cholesterol. Well, these idiots, these profit-chasing, non-scientific, non-physiologic, non-biochemical idiots at the pharma company, actually they're very smart because they're making money, are messing with you. And you're going to see ads like crazy for this drug in the next year. And you're going to have everybody doing fatty liver testing so that they can prescribe this drug instead of telling you to eat less sugar and starch. I'm pissed. I just, I'm having rants tonight. I don't know. Everything is just filling me with anger. But I care about my liver. I care about my heart. I care about my bones. And they want to block that receptor that makes those things a bit healthier so they can reduce fat in your liver. Nuts, 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 nuts. But do make sure that your thyroid hormone is okay. Get that tested. We do that. 561-517-0642. Set up a visit. Let's make sure your thyroid's functioning fine, but let's also get rid of your fatty liver disease by treating the root cause. Pharma, 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 pharma. Money, 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 money. Power.